whoever is knocking so loudly. Come on in. Good evening, Uncle. It's only us. Hand in hand, two together. <laughs> you didn't hear the watchman sing the hour. The clock struck nine just now. Well, what do you want from your old Uncle Peter? You promised to tell us a story, you know, when you returned from your journey. Yes, but, uh... Oh, pretend it's still early. Very well. An old soothsayer far away up in one of the valleys told me this old story. Now pay attention. There was a king who long ago heard tell of a ship that could go as well on land as on sea. Could the ship fly in the air also? Flying? Yes, I think it could. The king wanted such a ship himself. And to him who could build it, he promised his daughter and half the kingdom. Think how lovely that would be. He would have the princess too. Oh, the princess and half the kingdom. Many tried hard to build the ship. All who tried for the king met with failure. No one seemed to be able to build the ship. There were three brothers who lived in the forest who also tried to build the ship. Peter and Eric tried and failed. Finally, they came home, and the youngest brother, Ashlad, who was always poking in the fireplace, announced that he would also try. Ashlad, it's foolish. You can't do it. If your brothers could not build the ship, you cannot hope to. No, forget such dreams. I could win the king's daughter and half the kingdom, too. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to that. Ha! A new sun has risen. He will walk into the king's house and claim the king's daughter. And half the kingdom, too. Ha! No, it will go no better for you in the forest than for us. Oh, the wood we chop down turn into pig troughs. Just pig troughs. And our food in the mud. No, stay where you are, Ashlet, with your ashes. That's best. That may be, but he who does not try cannot win. You'll be back soon. With mud on your face. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Ashlad set off to try his luck. My, my, that is certainly a peculiar looking old man. Hmm? Good day to you, sir. Good day, lad. Good day. Where are you going? Into the deep forest to find the wood to build a ship that goes on land, sails the sea, and flies in the air. For he who can build such a ship can claim the king's daughter and half the kingdom. I'll try my luck. A good answer. Better than the two brothers gave me. They said, cutting troughs. And troughs they got. What have you got in that sack? Oh, nothing very secret. Just by dinner. Two stale crackers and a little bit of milk. A good answer. A boy who speaks the truth. The others said mud, and mud it became. If you share your dinner with me, I will help you. Gladly. I wish it were better. To a hungry man, crackers are cake. And milk like wine. Do you see that tree? Take your axe. Chop off a branch with leaves and then plant it in the ground. When you have done that, return to the tree. Lie down and go to sleep. Go on now. And so Ashlad did as the old man told him. In his dreams, he heard chipping and chopping, hammering and sawing. But he did not awaken until the old man shook him. What? Ship? It really is a ship. There has never been as fine a boat. I'll fly with the wind. <laughs> yes, it's a real flying ship. Remember one thing, Ash lad. Take everyone who wishes on board your ship. Yes, I'll remember that. Goodbye, old man. Goodbye. Good luck to you. Take care. Goodbye. Wonderful. 
What good luck? A flying ship. I will fly to the king's castle and claim my prize. The princess is mine. I must be a thousand feet in the air. Those must be the lands of the mountain king. What's that down there? Sir, what is your name, and why do you eat stones? My name is Hungry Man, and I eat stones because I can never get enough meat. That is a beautiful flying ship you have there, young lad. May I come aboard and fly with you? Of course. Come aboard, please. Thank you very much. I will take some rocks with me in case I get hungry. We're off to see the king's castle. Look ahead there. Dead ahead. There's a tall, skinny man waving his arms. I think he wants us to come down and pick him up. Can you steer the boat down there? Yes, I see him. Down we go. Tell me, good sir, what's your name and why are you standing here with a thousand pounds of weight chained to one of your feet? My name is Whisked Away. I travel a hundred miles with each step. If I did not have these weights, I would fly to the end of the world in five minutes. Would you like to come with us and go to see the king, Whisked Away? I would indeed, for I have always wanted to see the king. as fast as the wind. It goes as well on land and sails on the water. Wait, we'll go down on the sea and I'll show you. What is it? A fat little man sitting on the shore waving to us. He has his hand over his mouth. We go into the shore and talk to him. Good day, sir. What is your name, and why do you cover your mouth with your hand? I'd be neighbors hot and cold, and I cover my mouth with my hand because I have 15 summers and winters locked in my stomach. If I let them out, I will bring havoc to the world and all its people. Would you like to come with us to the king's castle? Indeed, thank you. I've never seen the king. And so they all sailed. Four comrades off to see the king. But the king was not pleased to see them, for Ashlad and his friends were truly not much to look at. And the king regretted his promise. Well, here is the ship, your majesty. This magic ship which has served me will serve you to fly in the air or go on the land. And now I claim my reward. No, not quite yet, my lad. First, another test. There are 300 tons of meat in my storehouse. <laughs> if you can empty it by tomorrow, then you shall have the princess as your wife. <laughs> I accept. But may I take a friend with me? Yes, take all three of them, and 300 more if you like. <laughs> No. 
It's not possible. Have you eaten every last bit? All 300 tons? Yes, we have. The princess is mine now. No, wait a bit. First, to win the princess's hand, you must go to the end of the world and bring back a pail of water. And then she yours. Yes, Your Majesty. But may I send one of my friends to do it? One of your friends? Of course you can. Here is the pail, my boy. To the world's end, and be back in ten minutes. Take off your weights and chains. Whisked away. <laughs> A man who flies? Ooh. Bad luck. Ah, I've been tricked. Whew. I'm sorry it took so long to return. Here's the water. The world's end is very far. And now that you have your water from the world's end, the princess is my reward. There is nothing left to do. No, not yet. I have 300 cords of wood in the storehouse for drying out the grain. If you can sit in there and burn it all up, then you can have her without a doubt. May I take one of my friends with me? Yes, you may take all of them. Uh, uh, so uh, they will all burn up together, I hope. <laughs> And so, Ashlad took hot and cold, and the two others as well, into the storehouse. The king ordered his men to heat the wood in the oven and turn it into a fiery furnace. To be sure, they could not get out. He ordered his men to lock the door. Ah! It is like Hades here. You must let out six winters to cool us off. The dear hats. Hey, stop, stop. That's too much. Warm us with a few summers. Good, good. Now we will sleep in comfort and wait to surprise the king in the morning. Here comes the king, expecting us to be burned to a crisp when he opens the door to see. Let out your last winter right in his face. Open the door and let me see the ashes of the four heroes. Oh, 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 help, help, stop, I'm freezing. Keep blowing, hot and cold. Keep blowing. Well now, Your Majesty, may I have the princess now? Yes, yes. Take her and half the kingdom. They're both yours now and forever. And so they were married amid fun and fireworks. And they put me in a cannon and shot me out, and I landed here. So that I could tell you all that happened to the king who had to keep his promise to Ashlad, and then they all lived happily ever after. Ever after? Yes, forever and ever. No one was unhappy. Now, the two of you must make me happy and run upstairs and go straight to bed. <laughs>